In this video, we're going to be talking about enterprise budgets. The reference material for this video is Farm Management, 9th edition by K. Edwards and Duffy. They have a chapter in their book on enterprise budget. I'll give you a link to the book down in the description if you want to get your hands on a good farm management textbook. We're going to start with their definition of an enterprise budget. Enterprise budget is an estimate of the cost returns and profit for a single activity on a farm. So here's the concept. We typically have multiple types of budgets, and you might have a budget known as a whole farm budget, which is the budget for the entire farm operation, oftentimes the farm operation and the farm household. And then you devise a budget for each individual activity on a farm, like you might have a vegetable crop and a livestock item on the farm or a row crop on the farm or any mix of the above. And the enterprise budget is a budget for a single activity on that farm. And the reason why you do an enterprise budget is simple. Businesses are designed to operate in order to make money. That's not a greed thing. You just need money to survive. And the wise thing to do is to always be examining your business to figure out how you might be able to improve your profits. Should you add another enterprise? And if so, what should it be? So if you have an idea for an enterprise you might wanna try, you might want to do a vegetable crop enterprise of some type. You make an enterprise budget for that vegetable crop. Should you expand an existing enterprise? Maybe you've got an enterprise budget for your corn operation, for your row crop operation. You're trying to figure out if you want to plant more corn next year and if that's the best way to make more money. Maybe you want to do some type of value added processing enterprise where you take the fruit you might be producing on your farm your berries or something like that and turning them into a jam or a pie or something else that's tasty and delicious that people might want to pay you top dollar for. And this is the first step to creating a budget for any type of enterprise, whether it's a farm or not. And step one is to actually learn how to run the business. I like to say, learn how to farm. It is my opinion <laughs> as an agribusiness professor that the individual that is best suited for creating a budget for an enterprise is the individual who's going to run the enterprise or has experience running the enterprise. From a practical standpoint, the way this typically gets broken down is that someone will start some type of enterprise. A farmer might decide, hey, let me plant some sweet corn next to my row crop operation. And then at the end of the growing season, they're gonna look at that and go, that's more than I can eat. Let me go pick some of this stuff and go sell it at the farmer's market. And then the next year they look at it and say, well, gee, I probably should have uh, budgeted for all of that to try to figure out if it was a good idea, if I could actually make money running that vegetable crop operation. And what you're tempted to do is to find some expert with a the right type of degree or someone who's good with a computer and have them develop your budget. And that is the wrong approach because the person who knows what goes in the budget is the person who actually knows how to grow the crop. So step one, actually learn how to farm, learn how to do the thing you're trying to build a budget for. Again, the person who is closest to the actual operations of the enterprise is the person best suited to develop the budget. Why? Because a budget is nothing but a list. If you know how to make a list, you know how to make a budget. Extra layer on top of that, budgets are financial documents. So it's not merely a list of how much fertilizer you need, how much plastic mulch you need, how much labor you're going to need, but it is a dollar value of that thing that you're going to need. So step three is to research cost and returns. Research, find out what you might be able to sell it for, find out what these things might cost. And remember our original definition that a budget is an estimate of cost and returns. The mistake people make is they build a budget and they go, aha, I'm going to stick to this budget. This budget's going to tell me exactly what I got to do to make the money. And then you'll get deep into it and realize that something is broken. Your, your irrigation system, for example, breaks and you've got to spend more money on irrigation. And now your budget is shot. That's just the way the world works, y'all. <laughs> Okay, the numbers on this spreadsheet are not going to be the numbers when you actually do the real world. So here's what you do. You grow the crop, you do the thing. And at the end of the year, you, you do some more financial documents. I have videos here on YouTube and classes where I cover these financial documents. And you go back and you see how close you got to your actual budget. And you go back and look at what you left off of the budget. 
And then you use your financial results in order to understand how to change your physical operations in order to actually make any money. So you go back to the budget and it's gonna take two or three cycles to get it right. If the budget isn't rock solid and perfect the first time you try it, don't let that discourage you. In fact, your first budget is gonna be your worst budget. And along the same lines, here are some things that you need to consider. Be wary of generic budgets. The reference book calls this a third party budget. What they mean is you can jump online and you can find at uh, an extension website from your local land grant university with budgets galore. I show these to students in my class and I talk about them in some of my different videos. There is a budget for pretty much every agricultural enterprise out there. If you'll just Google the thing you want to grow and then the state you're in and then the word extension, you'll get the extension services budget for that. Probably someone with a master's or a PhD in ag economics or agribusiness developed that budget out there free for everybody to use. That's an example budget. That's not the result you're going to get. That's your starting point. You take their budget, you modify it for your farm. The other thing is you've got to remember that your goal is not to make money in each enterprise. Your goal is to maximize profits across your entire farm. That gets to be really important if you're doing some kind of value-added processing on your farm. The crop itself might lose money, but the processing might make money. And of course, enterprise budgets require a lot of data. And that's what I mean when I say the person who's close to the operations needs to be doing the budget. They know what goes in the list of things you have to buy. And then from there, you've got to start doing some research and figure out how much all of these things cost. All right, now let's talk about the parts of an enterprise budget. It is good practice to always put a title at the top of everything that you do. That way you know what you're looking at and anyone you're showing it to will know what you're looking at. You might be taking this budget and bringing it to a bank in order to get a loan, right? You always begin with a name and a title. Here is the thing I'm trying to do. This is an enterprise budget for a vegetable crop. Then you're going to need a time period, such as per year, and you're going to need some indication in the budget as to what the unit of measure is. It's really common for row crop operations to use an acre. Very common for a livestock budget to use an animal. So in a cow-calf enterprise budget, you might be looking at a mama cow and you're looking at what it costs to produce one single mama cow. Also not uncommon in a livestock budget to have some common unit like 50 mama cows or 100 mama cows. So you've got to have a time period and then the units. Is this a per cow budget? Is this a per 50 cow budget? Is it a per acre budget? That kind of thing. Now, the next thing we're going to have on our enterprise budget is the good news. I always tell people that the good news comes first in your budget. The good news is the money you bring in. It may go by different names. Sometimes you might call it sales. Sometimes you might call it receipts. Sometimes you might call it revenue. And this top number is going to be a gross number. So gross means the money you bring in before you back out your expenses. And the biggest mistake people make when they're trying to start an agricultural enterprise is they fixate on that gross number. Hey, I sold a cow and I brought in $2,000. Great. What did you spend growing that cow? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe you should look that up. Now, the next thing that we list on our budget are the cost. And we tend to break these costs down into different categories. And I've seen very complex enterprise budgets that break them down into multiple categories. I've seen very simple ones that break them down into very few. And what we typically do is have these two bare minimum categories. The first category is variable cost or per unit cost, what it costs to grow an acre of this vegetable crop. It's very common to call these production costs or direct costs. These are the direct costs that you have to spend in order to make whatever thing you're making, the money you're spending on the pesticides on that field. Again, we sometimes call them variable costs. Sometimes we call them production costs. Sometimes we call them direct costs. And we've got some interchangeable words here. And the next category are fixed costs. Sometimes we call these ownership costs or indirect costs. So here's the format. Revenue across the top a category for the direct cost of operating the enterprise, and then a category for the indirect costs that are associated with, say, owning the land that you're producing the crop on. The other thing you're going to see is you're going to see intermediate calculations. So every time you have a category, every time you've got a breakdown, variable versus fixed cost, 
there's going to be some type of intermediate calculation. For example, in this budget example we have for you here, there is income above variable cost, AKA gross margin, gross margin. So gross margin is your gross revenue minus your operating expenses. And that's an intermediate calculation. The purpose of the intermediate calculations is to give you a target. You're gonna bring in 5,600 bucks selling this vegetable crop and you need to have a positive gross margin, which means your total variable cost, your direct cost had to be less than 5,600. And so what this is gonna tell you is how much above those direct costs you have to cover those indirect costs. And that brings us to a conversation about profit and brings us to a bit of a philosophical discussion about economic profit versus accounting profit. When we look at economic profit, we have to count the opportunity costs. We have to count the other things you could be doing. And these are the two things that pop up the most that I see most commonly on small farm operations or small farm enterprises. The first one is the cost of free labor. I grew up on a farm and what I know about how farm labor tends to be structured, farms or small businesses, a lot of small businesses operate this way. You got kids working on the farm, you got mom and dad working on the farm and nobody gets a paycheck. Nobody gets a paycheck. At the end of the year, if the farm is profitable, the individuals working on the farm have money to live off of. And because no one's getting a paycheck, it's really easy to overlook the value of the labor that's being inserted into that farm. But all those people working off the farm could have gotten a job off the farm. And that is the opportunity cost of their labor. So you have to put the cost of the labor into the budget, even if you're not paying anyone directly. And the next thing is the cost of capital. For a lot of, for a lot of small operations, farmers will cash flow it themselves. And because they're not borrowing money, they don't count the interest on a loan. But it's not a bad idea to include a cost of capital. If you could have earned 10% on your money invested in an investment off of the farm, well, then the money you put into this budget, the you know five grand, roughly speaking, of operating we see on this vegetable crop budget, that money could have been invested. And so you've got to include an interest rate on the money that you're spending on the crop, even if you're not borrowing the money. 